because I was naked and I hid myself. Go ahead and turn your Bible to John 20, chapter 20, verse 1 through 6 we're going to read here. I'll give you a second to find that. This is in the same book, obviously, we read earlier. John, we read chapter 18 earlier. It's chapter 20. And then we're going to go to John 21 right after that, so we'll just turn a page there. Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, God loved it, don't you? And said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out, and the other disciple, and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together. Everybody said they ran together. So they both ran together. And the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb. That'd be like me. I'm Peter. Everybody's outrunning me. I'm like, oh, dude, I'll get there in a minute, right? So Peter strolls up. Um, he outran Peter and came to the tomb first. So he got there before Peter. And he, stooping down, verse 5, and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there. Yet he did not go in. Everybody say he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen cloths lying there. And the handkerchief that had been... Oh, let me, that's verse 7, never mind. I'm going to stop right there. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and he went into the tomb. Very important. Peter went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloths lying there. Now go to chapter 21, verse 1 through 7. We're going to read here. After these things, Jesus, verse 1, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself, Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana, and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples worked together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. Sounds like something Peter would say, right? And they said to him, we're going with you also. They went out and immediately they got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. Verse 4, but when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Everybody say, Jesus stood on the shore. Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? And, he, and they answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the, on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it because of the multitude of fish. Verse 7. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved <laughs> said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it. Peter's walking around naked. And he plunged into the sea. So in Genesis, Adam and Eve, we have Adam and Eve hid themselves from the Lord when they failed the Lord, right? When they feel when they feel like they let the Lord down, they were ashamed of what they did, they hid themselves. In the book of John, Peter went into a tomb and he plunged into the sea, right? We just read that. So in Genesis, a man fails and he hides himself in the trees. And in the book of John, we have a man who failed God three times, might I add again. And he ran to the tomb as fast as he could, even though he couldn't beat John. He ran to the tomb and he got there and he went inside to see what was going on in there. And then when he was at the sea and he heard, the minute he heard it was Jesus, 
It says, if you go a little further in verse 7, it says it was two cubits, which is actually 100 yards. And he swam 100 yards to the shore as fast as he could when all the other disciples re reeled in the fish and took the boat back, right? So he didn't want to wait. What is it? What was revealed to Peter about God that Adam did not know? That's the question I want you to ponder today. What did Peter know about God that Adam did not know? Just think about that for a second. What did Peter know? Peter learned by having a relationship with God that there was no possible way by having a relationship with Jesus, there was no possible way that this one, Jesus, would reject him over his failures. Amen? Adam was hiding from fear in the garden. He was ashamed. He was hiding from the presence of God. But he failed. When he failed God, but there were things that he did not know about God. Amen? He just got, they were in, he, he just was breathed and was made man. He was having a relationship with God, but there's lots of things about God that he did not know. That Peter knew. Peter, G God was Jesus. Jesus was God in flesh. Amen? Everybody knows that. Everything, all the attributes, everything that God is, is in Jesus. There's no, there's no difference. So, Peter hung out with the living God, the living bread of life, right? He even said, you are Jesus, you are, you are God, you are the Messiah, the coming one. But there's things about him he didn't know. Think about, perhaps, this is just my thoughts on this. What if that day when Adam failed God in the garden, and Adam and Eve, they hid themselves from the Lord, and they're hiding themselves. What if God thought to himself, Adam, I know that you know me. I know you know that I'm a holy God. I know you know that I'm a just God. But there's things about me, Adam, that you do not know. There's things about me that have got to take place. There's things about me that there's a plan that I have. I have a plan. And there's things in this plan that have to take place. It's too early. There's, there's people that need to be born. There's people that need to walk out their obedience in Christ. Amen. There's things that have to happen. I'm a God of order. There's things that have to happen in order for this plan to take place. And that plan is for he made, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God, of God in Him. Amen? That's the plan. Adam, I know that you love me. I know that you know that I'm I'm needed, that I'm omni, omnipresent. I know you know that I'm a just God, Adam. But there's things about me you don't know. I have a plan, and that plan is for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Amen? Come on, say it with me. That whomever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen? That's the plan. The righteous man may fall seven times and he gets back up. Amen? Amen? Adam, there's things about me that you don't know. Adam, there's this plan that I have and that plan is come to me all you who are burdened and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Cast your cares upon the Lord for He cares for you. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all, everybody say, all unrighteousness. Amen? That's my plan, Adam. How many times have we missed a calling on our life or failed to hear His voice because we were ashamed of our own failures, the things that we did, choices that we made, roads that we went down we know we shouldn't have went down, and it caused us to hide in the trees when really we should have been running to the one whose mercy is new every morning. Amen? Hallelujah, Jesus. Peter was broken over his mistake and he wanted to do whatever it took to make it up to the Lord. Peter decided to plunge into the sea and he swam towards the presence of the Lord. He swam towards the presence of the one who he knew that day did not go on that shore to reject him when he came in, into his presence. Amen? He, Peter knew it. If Peter had any doubt in his mind that God would have rejected him, that Jesus would have rejected him that day. The last time they met eyes with one another, what happened? He failed him three times, didn't he? 
And instead, Jesus turned and looked at Peter. That's the last time they made eye contact in the Bible that is recorded. And that's the last thought that Peter had in his mind with his Lord. Everything that he, that he did with his Lord, everything that he did with Jesus, his last thought was when he denied him, right? Um, turn to John 21, 15 through 16. I'll find it there. I closed the Bible, sorry. John 21, 15 through 16. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, this is right after the disciple Peter jumped, plunged into the sea. Peter swam to the shore to see Jesus. The disciples come in with the boat. They got the fish. They, they're having breakfast, right? Okay. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Your failure cannot cancel God's plan for your life. Amen? It doesn't, he doesn't accept you. God does not accept you in spite of your failures. But he accepts you with your failure. You don't have to wait to fix whatever you got going on. All you got to do is come up to him, kneel down at his feet, and cast your burdens upon him. It says that he cares for you, right? My yoke is easy and my burden is light, it says in his word. John 21. Jesus asked Peter to declare his love for him three times. Why did he ask him to do it three times? Because he knew... That the three times that Peter declared his love for him swallowed up the three times that he denied him. Amen? The three times that he denied him was swallowed up by the three times that he verified and told the Lord that he loved him. Church, he's saying to us today, it doesn't matter how many times you failed me before. The only thing that matters is right now, this love affair that I have between me and you, this relationship that we have, that's the only thing that matters. Your past does not matter. Amen? It doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter. This moment forward is what matters. Everything from this second forward is what matters. Nothing else matters to you. All that matters is you just saying, Lord, I'm yours. Have your way in my heart. It doesn't matter what you are messed up in today. You repent. He says, turn to me. He doesn't see your sin. All he sees is his love for you and he sees your potential. Amen? It grieved Peter that Jesus asked him three times to declare his love for him. But all the while, Jesus was restoring Peter to move forward and to take back everything that the enemy had taken away that day. John 21, 18 through 19. Mike, please. Verse 18, it says, this is right after he said, feed my sheep. It says, most assuredly I say to you, this is Jesus speaking. Most assuredly I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and you walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, Jesus spoke, signifying by what death he, meaning Peter, would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. In 1 John, Jesus calls Peter, if you read 1 John, I think it's verse 42. Jesus calls Peter Cephas, which means a stone or a rock. Peter was a very emotional and unstable person at times. We all agree on that. As an early disciple, a 
of Jesus. He was very emotional and unstable at times, but in the book of Acts, Peter became one of the most bold, most powerful, most faithful leaders of the church. Jesus named Peter that day not for who he was, but for who he would become. Amen? So what's the first thing that Jesus said to the disciples when he had Peter and James and John? When he, when he first met the disciples, what's the first thing he said to them? He said, I will make you fishers of men. Follow me, right? On the day where he redeems Peter, where he restores Peter and brings Peter back into his calling, what does he say to Peter that day in, in that verse? He says, follow me, right? Nothing has changed. The plan has not changed. It's the same plan that when their lives started with him to where their lives ended with him. He said, follow me. In my last verse, and I'm going to be closing here. John 21, verse 20 and 22. It says, Peter, um, what verse did I say? 20, yeah, 20 through 22. I guess I just turn around, right? So above my head. Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved, there we go again, following who also had leaned on his breast at the supper, the last supper, and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, but Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, if, my will, if I will that he remain till I come again, till I come, what is that to you? What's he tell Peter? You follow me, right? The plan has not changed. It doesn't matter... What I do, it doesn't matter what pastor does, it doesn't matter what the deacons do, it doesn't matter what your Sunday school teacher that raised you or your parents that raised you, it doesn't matter what any of them have done or is going to do. What matters is, what are you going to do? What are you doing right now? Are you following him? That is the only thing that matters to Jesus. Amen? Please bow your heads today and we're going to close. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glorify your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, most of us feel shame in what we have done have become in life at times. That we distance ourselves from Jesus, the very one who can give us strength in everything that we need. I got news for you today. The greatest love affair between God and His Son and His daughter is the one with the person, with the one who has been forgiven much. Amen. That is the greatest love affair in the Bible. The Bible says, "Who has been who? He who has been forgiven much, loves much." Jesus didn't go to that shore that day to tell the disciples, "Good job, way to go, you guys, you guys ran the race." He came to the shore that day to reconnect his eyes with the man. Who, when the last time they stared each other in the eyes, he failed him and wept bitterly that day. Are you today standing around a smaller, weaker fire trying to keep warm? Or are you submitted to him and his will? Is your heart being consumed and changed on a daily basis? Ask yourself that today. Say, Lord, search me. Reveal to me, Lord, where I'm at with you. I think a lot of us deep down know the answer to that question. When you mess up, do you hide amongst the trees? Or do you come running as fast as you can? Do you plunge into the water and swim as fast as you can? 
just to be in the sweet presence of your Lord, knowing that he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. Stop beating yourself up today over the past and untether yourself from the whipping post because he has already paid the price for that sin that you have in your life. He's already taken every strike that was needed for you to have forgiveness. Amen? It says he remembers your sin. If you come up and repent, it says, come to me. If you repent of your sin, he will remember it as far as, no longer, as far as the east is to the west. Are you following close enough to Jesus to be found guilty of following him? Or are you following at a distance as Peter was?